Yeah, gaslighting comes from this movie in the 40s uh, with Charles Borier, and and um, and it it kind of lingered in our society. It never really caught on until the politics of the last four years. Gaslighting is when a person who has sociopathic or uh, um, or psychopathic tendencies purposely manipulates a person into believing they have a problem that never existed, manipulating the environment to prove to them that they have this problem. And once they finally, they fully accept it, they, are, they fall within their control. It, it's, it's a scourge that's, that's impacting so many millions of people globally and, and even in our political system. People don't even know that these ideas that have been implanted in their head are not theirs and fall under the, the predatory um, uh, control of these, of these despicable pathological narcissists. Well, the, the, these pathological narcissists who, have the, you know, who are sociopaths, they come from backgrounds where they were born into families that destroyed their capacity to have empathy. So you, you think about what creates a criminal. It's, it's during the, the formative years, they're they were crushed psychologically, so they come into adulthood, and all they care about is getting their own needs. To them, it's better to be the, the bug instead mm -hmm. of the bug on the windshield. They will do anything to get what they need, even if it's at the cost of hurting people. And without empathy, they don't have that internal, what we say in the psychological field, they don't have that cognitive dissonance, an internal unease that maybe perhaps they're doing something wrong. And in my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, I explain that gaslighters like pedophiles, or I should say gaslighters like people who prey upon younger children, they look for the weak ones. So gaslighters require a person who's codependent, a person who was raised to be selfless, to be altruistic, to always believe in people. So they, are, they seek that person who is susceptible to their manipulation. It's not a coincidence. Gaslighters cannot fulfill their control destiny with the average healthy person. They need a certain person who lacks psychological strength or has really low self-esteem. So as much as I can tell you about what are the red flags, and I will, what are the red flags for a gaslighter and how do you find them, they find their victims. Any person who has been gaslit comes from a background where they have already been beaten down, they've already been, any, any self-esteem or any feeling that of their intuition is correct has been surgically removed from them, and gaslighters can spot them, they can sniff them out, and that's where the human magnet syndrome um, comes to bear. The narcissist need the codependent, and the codependent need the narcissist, like a dancing couple. And, and the part that I emphasize in my book is the codependent actually feels like they're getting something from the narcissist, and that's why they fall prey to these gaslighting monsters. To understand the human magnet syndrome is to understand that when codependents meet narcissists, they fall in love with them. They experience joy and, and, and such wonderful soulmate. It continues until the narcissist comes out of their shell, their, their, their mask is taken off, and at that time the codependent, by their very nature, because of their personality, their weakness, their low self-esteem, their lack of experience in setting boundaries, they are trapped. And then when they are trapped, they make the decision that they've known their whole life. And every codependent will tell you is why fight something because it's better to be in a relationship than to be alone. And that combination, that what I call the metaphorical dance partnership, that the leader needs the follower. They both are getting something from it. And as much as, as, much as I, I can tell your listeners, and I will, look out for these traits, you also have to look out for yourself because if you are suffering from horrible self-esteem and, and you have no self-love and you, and you fit the, the, you know, this codependent description, that's going to get you at the end. It's not the guy who's going to trick you because to a healthy person, that not only do these monsters not even try to connect to or manipulate healthy people, they're afraid of them. They can smell them normal and healthy as a person who has problems, who has internal resources to solve them, or seeks external resources, whether it's a rabbi, a priest, a therapist, 
to me, that is healthy, where you love yourself and respect yourself enough to know, hey, this really sucks. I don't like what's going on in my life. I need help. I- That's, that is the definition of health, because I don't believe, I mean, maybe I'm jaded, I don't believe that people... But the, there's people that don't have problems. They are weak. See, to understand a codependent is to understand they just don't happen because of their personality. These people, just like the narcissist, they come from families that um, created this psychopathology, the, this mental health problem. So they are by nature afraid of being alone. They are terrified of loneliness. They have so much shame, and, and they're conscious of it. And so when they, they need someone to feel good about themselves. So when they fall in love with the beautiful, charming, seductive narcissist or the bold, funny, absolutely, I was going to say, man, they feel like they hit the jackpot. They have, and they don't see a narcissist like, oh, I'm, an, I'm a poor, pathetic codependent. I'll take the narcissist. No, they think of that handsome, edgy, bold, charismatic man or woman, and they think, oh, my God, I've met my soulmate. And conversely, the pathological narcissist finds someone that they can talk about their problems all night. They can go on a date and talk for an hour and a half straight, not be interrupted, talk about their three failed marriages, why they won't pay child support, and that person across the table from them grabs their hand, cries, and says, oh, my gosh, I feel so bad for you. It's like, they, it's like the two are matched so perfectly, and that's the human magnet syndrome. That's the draw that brings them together. But if you are the gaslighting type of narcissist, because not all narcissists are gaslighters, that's the target you want. You Uh are looking for that. Well, they say statistics are hard to compile when it comes to narcissists for one reason, is narcissists don't know they're narcissistic. No, no, the part part of the diagnosis um, is uh, for narcissistic personality disorder or what we call the sociopath, the diagnosis is antisocial personality disorder because, you know, we in the field, we actually have to abide by diagnostic criteria. No, they don't know that there's anything wrong with them. They tend to ex- externalize all their problems. If something bad happens, they see it in other people, and it's called projection. They put, they, they put onto others what they can't accept in themselves. So if a narcissist meets another narcissist, they will, like, be mad because that person is selfish. And, yeah, it's funny because huh. they're, they're talking about themselves and they don't even know it. And so it's so easy to spot because they're so broken and need another broken person to feel normal. All gaslighters are what I call pathological narcissists that have a disorder that's either a narcissistic personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder, which most people know as sociopath. They are, um, they, they lack empathy. They are very selfish. They are entitled. They believe that their needs supersede everyone else's. They have this grandiose belief of themselves. In other words, they, they, they sincerely believe that they are bigger and better than they really are. And, and it's a distorted sense of self. They, they are pushy. They can be arrogant. They can be vain. So, and so this is what I would call your standard run-of-the-mill narcissist. The gaslighter is that narcissist, but now you have to add what we, sociopathy. You have to add um, not having a conscience, not having empathy, not, not feeling at all bad um, at hurting someone. They have to be not only tuned out, but having no connection because they, they hurt someone so badly that having any empathy would disrupt them. So, so I'll think of one. I, I have a client whose uh, who's, uh, uh, husband was a, uh, a medical doctor. Husband was a medical doctor. And she was 21, and she came from the family that was so typical of codependence. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about narcissists. And he immediately took control of the family, and she felt she was fulfilling her dream. She found a man. She found a doctor. She got a house. Right. And he immediately started arranging not only the family and her life. She found herself pregnant once, twice, three times. And little by little, he would berate her and tell her what is wrong with her. He would manipulate her or the environment or other people to prove that she was inept socially, that her anxiety was out of control. She already had anxiety because she had low self-esteem. Right, and this just magnified it. Well, not only did it magnify it, he created 
Um, he, he, he manipulated the environment to prove to her that she had something that she didn't have. So at the end of the night, he would say, wow, you were really anxious. And, you know, people came up to me and asked me if you're okay. You know, maybe you should get some help. They are manipulating the environment systematically in order to implant a huh. narrative. And a narrative is a story about yourself. They're more than liars. They, they are uh, they're sociopaths. They, they, they have a plan to hurt, dominate, and destroy someone's individual psychological spirit for the purpose of control and domination. Um, my experience is that the gaslighters don't do it because of excitement. Um, it is because they have this need to feel safe and control in a world that doesn't love them, in a world that hates them. So they have to figure out a way to exist um, in their own little bubble, secret bubble, feeling like they are on top of the world in which they are godlike, where they can control people and, and make people love and admire them and keep them trapped without outside interference. Oh, no, well, well, it's impossible. Uh, research shows that it's virtually impossible to, um, to have successful outcomes for people who are sociopathic. You can't help someone who not only doesn't think they have a problem, but who doesn't feel bad about a problem. You have to have some form of dissonance in your thinking. You have to have guilt, sadness, regret. Therapy relies on the fundamental psychological function of feeling bad about what's going on in your life or yourself. If you, if you are a sociopath, gaslighter, or extreme narcissist, you are only feeling bad if someone's catching you. You are feeling so satisfied and fulfilled because you have created your own little bubble where you have your little zombie slave who, who has been inculcated or manipulated to believe there's someone else and they don't even know it. You've cut off their relationships with others. You've sometimes cut them off from working. You've interfered with their ability to get help from psychologists. You've, you've interfered with their relationships with families. You have isolated them so perfectly and masterfully that you are guaranteed to maintain this godlike, powerful persona that makes you feel good. But, and there's different forms of gaslighters. In, in my gaslighting chapter, I, I specified the, the different forms because I wanted people to know that they come in different shapes and sizes. So you can have the quiet, sweet, um, seeming person who, is care, you know, who has this, this covert, fake persona who, who, be, who builds this, this belief system that he or she is there to care for you and protect you. And, and then sets up the environment and, and is so surprised, I mean, he fakes this when this, this person, his victim, starts to feel um, engulfed by their own problem while he's manipulating the environment to make it happen. Or you can be the more aggressive, um, um, destructive type where you're the bully, you're, 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 you know, any form of dissent can result in, in a, a, an eruption of violence. And, and there, there's other forms, but what ties the different gaslighters together is a purposeful, systematic plan to weaken a person, to isolate them, and to inculcate them or, or implant these narratives that there's something wrong with them that's not true, to get them to believe it. So once you believe you're mentally incompetent, you're socially incompetent, you, um, a perfect example of gaslighting, and I actually wrote this, um, and I think in my book I, I call it Gaslighting Kendra, is a person who has weight problems, a normally beautiful, attractive woman who maybe was 10 or 15 pounds overweight, which some people would say, perfect. But he seized upon that, and he started to berate her. And... And, and he started to um, condemn her and embarrass mm. her. And because she was an emotional eater to begin with, because she has this codependency and this poor self-esteem and all this other stuff, she naturally used food to self-medicate. Some people use alcohol, drugs, so food was her drug. So not only would she eat to mask her pain of her husband berating her, he would encourage it. He would buy the ice cream. He would, oh. get this, he would supersize her McDo McDonald's. Oh, my God. And 
all the time call her a fat pig or chubby. He was systematically manipulating her so that she would think that she is so ugly and so fat and so obese that no one would ever love her, that if she ever left him, she, um, she would believe the narrative that was implanted in her. And I, and I go to great lengths in my, in my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, to talk about there's different types of narcissists. There are the, the, the ones that we were talking about, the gaslighting, sociopathic ones that have no empathy, and they are unequivocally bad people. Bad. There's, yeah. there's nothing good about them. Then you have, say, a textbook narcissist who will work hard, take care of his family, as long as everything he does makes him feel good. Mm -hmm. and, and so he's not... Um, all that empathetic, but everything has to be for him. And when he, and everything comes in the line, of course, he you know, the human magnet syndrome says he's going to only meet a uh, codependent. Then he can be this quote loving, conditionally loving person. Now, re if you go against him, he'll strike back and he will take his love away. So they are harmful people and very hurtful. So I wouldn't call them good people. So there's levels of, and you can't see me quoting bad. So pathological narcissists are bad because they need weaker people. They prey upon them. They need, they're, they're leeches. They're, they have this symbiotic relationship where they can't fulfill their narcissistic destiny unless they meet a person um, to whom they can exploit. And that's that dance I talked about, the narcissist codependent dance. I can't get into the, the mind of the songwriters but I can interpret it. You know, said the night man, we are programmed to receive. You can check out all you want, but you can never leave. In other words, the narcissist is programmed to take, to exploit, and to, to um, extract, to, to pull away. Um, and they make you believe that you can leave anytime you want. See, this is classic gaslighting. You, um, you believe gaslighting requires... And this is the bizarre thing. Gaslighting requires you to be in love, to, f to believe that the gaslighter has your best interest. Mm -hmm. And, and that, is, uh, that is the Stockholm Syndrome. If you believe that the gaslighter is watching your back, is, is the one that's trying to help you. Protecting you. Protecting you, of course, you're oblivious to how they're actually setting you up to make you feel worse about yourself. They might say, hey... You, you know, you, this is Hotel California. You can like, check out whatever you want. So what, what? They, of course, they're horribly dangerous. A person that you have no idea, I mean, they can ruin a person's life. They can, they can take away everything that was once meaningful, pull their Jeez. family away, pull their mental. Um, we're, we're actually talking about apples and oranges. A ser serial killer is sociopathic, but they are murderers. They thrive on whatever excites them, and, 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 and I'm not an expert on serial killers, but they are very different from the gaslighters. The gaslighters need a relationship in order to get what they need. They don't want them to die. They, they want them to die inside so that they have nothing outside of the relationship so that they can be entrapped in this Hotel California. Oh, they're, they're horribly broken, and if we go back, pathological narcissists, um, by definition, have no insight into how broken they are. They are oblivious to it. Yes, they can, but it's... So if you think about cults, uh, the, the, you know, we know a lot about cults. We know about these, you know, you know Elizabeth Smart and all these people who have... Yeah, um, it, once you change someone's thinking and you make them beholden to you and you entrap them, they're stuck and you take away any escape. I mean, the, the gaslighter, not, because they're a sociopath, they can predict escape methods and they, they close each one of them off. But every so often, something happens. They see, I mean, my YouTube station, you know, the 8 million views and 100 videos, someone sees it and they say, holy blank, I can, and, and they look at my videos and then they realize, I can't believe this is happening, and they will reach out to a therapist. And that happens, and it happens all the time. It just doesn't happen enough. Now, the problem is, is to break the gaslighting. I had a session today with a client who is so gaslight, gaslit, and she is an extremely intelligent attorney, bright, intelligent, and more than you can think. And I, it took, I was hammering away at how 
her thoughts were not rational and logical. It's like, you know, if you think of someone that was brainwashed, you know, in the Korean War and they come back, you have to deprogram them. You have to help them see that their thoughts are not theirs. And when someone starts to see it, it's almost like there's a chemical reaction in them. They shudder, they cry, they sob, and they say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this happened to me. But yet, that self-esteem and those psychological problems that created their codependency are still there. So in order to really cure them, not only do you have to help rearrange their thoughts, deprogram them, you have to help that self-esteem, that lack of self-love, that self-hatred, and you have to reverse that inculcated disorder or problem that never really existed that they believe is so bad that no one would love them. Get arrested. It, it all depends. There's different types of gaslighting, and in and, and, and some type of gaslighting, there are, there are crimes committed. You know, there, you know, there could be rape. There can be stealing. You could have stole everyone's money. You could have, and, but most gaslighters don't ever, are, are not held accountable. They kind of, re, they kind of re, re, they get, they kind of find some darkness where they can lurk long enough to um, find some safety and no one can remember them. They might move. They might find, and they ultimately will find another person. It's, you think of a person who preys on children. It's like they, go, they, they will go to a, a, a playground um, and always know the right child, or, or a person who preys on women who's domestically violent. They will know exactly what to look for. These are very smart sociopaths. They, they will go underground for just long enough, move, um, or, and that's one part. But the other part is they will do everything they have within their disposal and their f financial abilities to discredit the person who's accusing them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Bernie Madoff is a classic sociopath, white-collar sociopath. Classic. He, he had this outside. He was so good. Sociopaths know, are expert costume makers, and they're expert at wearing a costume and making people believe that's who they are. These people, these type of sociopaths, which are gas, can be gaslighters, they are exceptionally talented at creating this likable, normal persona that makes them fit in society, unlike the sociopaths that end up in prison because they're petty criminals. Yeah, Madoff was, was sociopath par excellence. What he did and how he did it was worse than any hardened criminal who is um, who is, has a series of uh, rape and aggravated assaults.